This lesson is about voltage drop under a load and how to calculate battery voltage drops. So let's consider this very simple circuit. It doesn't get much simpler than this. You just have a 9 volt battery connected to a 330 ohm load resistor. Uh, it would look like this. I could just use a battery snap and a breadboard with a 330 ohm resistor. So what should the voltage drop be across the load resistor? Well, since there's only one resistor, we should drop all the battery voltage, so 9 volts. And how much current should flow in the circuit? Well, if we use Ohm's law, that would be voltage divided by resistance. So that's 9 volts divided by 330 ohms. It gives a current of about 27 milliamps. But what you have to realize is that all batteries have internal resistance. That results from the battery's chemical composition, the number of cells in the battery, the connections between the cells, the size of the electrodes, the type of electrolyte, the temperature, and on and on, all those conditions. But you can think of it as just a single series resistor in series with the perfect battery. So the battery voltage, when measured at the terminals with no load attached, would be the maximum voltage that battery could ever provide. But the voltage available to a load will always be less than the maximum, because some of the voltage will be dropped on the internal battery resistance. So, redrawing that internal battery resistance over here might help you see better that it is just a simple DC series circuit but it's also known as a voltage divider circuit because the voltage gets divided up among the resistors. And this matches up with Kirchhoff's voltage law that basically says the voltage drops in the circuit have to add up to the source voltage. So how do we figure out the internal resistance of a battery? You can't measure it directly. Instead, you calculate it from the measurements that you can do. First, measure the source voltage of the battery at the terminals with no circuit attached. Let's call that the source voltage. When I measured my 9-volt battery, it actually measured as 8.83 volts. And then I measured the load resistor. It's supposed to be a 330 ohm resistor. It actually measured as 324 ohms, but that's it. It was a 5% tolerance resistor, and that's within the tolerance range. The next thing I did was calculate the circuit current. Using Ohm's law, that should be voltage divided by resistance, and I calculated that to be 27 milliamps. Now I realize this 27 milliamps flows through the load resistor, but it also has to flow through that internal resistance of the battery. So when I connected my circuit up and used my voltmeter to measure the voltage drop across the load resistor from point B to point C on this schematic, I measured a voltage drop of 8.74 volts. That's lower than the, the battery voltage was supposed to be. So what happened? Well, that's what we call a, a voltage drop under a load. The missing voltage is actually the voltage that's dropped on the internal battery resistance. To find the voltage dropped on the battery, I take my voltage drop on the load, which is 8.74 volts that I measured, and subtract that from the total battery voltage when no load is attached. That's 8.83 volts. And that gives me, if I do that subtraction, 0 0.09 volts or 90 millivolts that's dropped on the battery. Now once I know that 90 millivolts, I can use Ohm's law to solve for the internal resistance of the battery. I just take the 90 millivolts, divide it by 27 milliamps of current that's flowing in the circuit, and I get 3.3 .3 ohms of resistance. Now internal resistance of the circuit doesn't just come from the battery. It also comes from the wires in the circuit. Now the wires are there to distribute the current to the desired load. And remember that wires have very little resistance, but if you have very long wire, the longer the wire, the more the resistance. So in some cases, say wiring, electrical wiring in a home or a business, if the stretches are very long, you're going to drop some of the voltage on those wires. So whether it's a, a greater load placed on a car battery by jump-starting a friend's car, or replacing a smaller speaker with a large one, or running long lengths of electrical wire, or, or changing a small motor out for a more powerful larger motor. Understanding voltage drops under loads helps you better understand and design circuits and analyze problems that come up. Now, wouldn't it be great if we could have a, a power supply that would supply the same voltage level no matter what the load was? That would be a perfect voltage supply. And we can get close, but that's another lesson on regulated power supplies.